You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6.30. Designed with very narrow halls, very small rooms. We're overcrowded. The pace of growth in Muhammad has picked up in the last few years. The downside is room has run out in the classrooms. Muhammad Seymour schools officials say the biggest need is at the junior high. But a proposal taxpayers will soon weigh in on would address space issues district wide. Our investigative reporter Renee Cooper is with us. So Renee, what will voters be considering at the ballot box next Tuesday? Well, the school board tells me, president tells me the most the building that is in the most dire need is this one, the junior high school. Muhammad Seymour Junior High was first built as a high school in 1961. Then it was converted in 1981 when they built the current high school. The board president says based on its age, its condition, and the fact that it was designed to suit high schoolers, simply adding on to it wouldn't be a good use of taxpayer money in the long run. Now, the board's final plan still includes a chunk of taxpayer change. And on June 28th, the voters will ultimately decide if it's a worthwhile call. Even after cutting bigger classrooms in half to fit more kids, Muhammad Seymour Junior High School has run out of room to grow. We're just flat out of space. The final price tag to make a lot behind Middletown Prairie Elementary into the new middle school is $57 million. I think it was conservative. Jim Risley was a teacher in these hallways for more than three decades. He was also a part of creating the most recent referendum to replace the school. Now, He's advocating for it. I was uh, appointed the uh, chairman of the Citizens for Bulldog Blueprint while I was out walking my dog. We just really need at this point uh, to walk away from that building as a junior high. That's the bulk of the nearly $98 million plan. The remainder will go toward expanding the rest of the district's public schools, including upgrades meant to improve traffic flow. There's a lot of varying thoughts out there. Uh, but this was the plan that got good, strong community consensus. But that plan is going to take an investment from taxpayers. We're excited to be able to, to take this to the voters. A referendum on next Tuesday's ballot will ask if they're willing to take on a rise in property taxes. If you own a home valued at $100,000, the referendum would push your property tax bill up by $295 a year. If it's a more realistic $250,000, the bill will go up an estimated $727 for the next 20 years. Bruce, are there any concerns with raising property taxes for people, considering just their life expenses are going up everywhere? Sure. Else? You know, property tax increases are, are never anything people get real excited about. It is a difficult time for a referendum. And all of these reasons, even collectively, uh, for me personally, they don't outweigh the responsibility we have to give our kids a classroom. If it doesn't pass, we've got some serious space concerns. Um, and I would expect us to be back in front of the voters um, with the plan again. Now, in April, state lawmakers authorized a temporary but sizable increase in the district's borrowing limit. That's so the board can issue bonds to cover the cost. Now, the added property tax cost would expire with that bond 20 years from now. There are several other questions raised in the community throughout this process. I've addressed more of those for you online at WCIA.com. Back to you. All right, Renee, thank you so much. Now, voters in several other school districts will have a say on bond referendums. The Yoga is looking to make three and a half million dollars worth of upgrades to its facilities. The Illinois Association of School Boards says Sullivan is hoping to pay for 25 million in renovations and Arthur a little more than 30 million.